You've obviously won here in a completely different series, but what's the difference for folks that don't know between the two super speedways that we see? What's the difference between Talladega and here in Daytona? Uh, if we were at Daytona that day, I won't win because at the trioval, I was not leading. It took all the way to pit out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then for me, less is more. I, I When I try to do more at these places, I tend to get myself in trouble. So um, sometimes it works out and you, and you win, um, and sometimes you're more often than not, though, I've been crashed so or, or causing crashes or leading, uh, putting myself in a position to be in the crash that someone else causes. So um, Daytona is just, a, it is smaller. I mean, it's it's measurable. They do measure it smaller, um, and it, it just a little bit tighter entries and exits to the corners, uh, a little less width, uh, a little bit narrower, and then just a little bit tighter uh, radius is getting in and out of the corners. So, um, yeah, it's definitely, definitely different. Um, and it just, it does, it does. F I mean, this is Daytona. This yeah. is where our sport, the catalyst for it, getting the the, na the national and then and then worldwide attention, a lot of it revolves around the beaches here sure. and, and this speedway. We see sellouts here it's the ninth consecutive that the grandstands and the infield has been sold out this was like the earliest that folks were buying tickets and wanting to come to this race how as a driver knowing that there's fans in the grandstands packed out the infield packed out but they're all coming to see you guys race how's that feel on a sunday it's wild the the uh, it sounds weird to say but the coolest part about the Sunday of the Daytona 500 is waking up because now you're finally there and the whole day is in front of you. Now, how it goes, you have I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But waking up, I'm going to think I overslept. Do I'm you sleep? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, it's a superpower. I can sleep. So I jealous. sleep all the time, anywhere, anytime, any place. <laughs> um, yeah, I love it. Uh, I hope I never lose it. I know. Um, airplane? Can you sleep on an airplane? Absolutely. We hit the ground here yesterday, and I woke up when we hit the ground. I didn't even feel as the landing gear come out or anything so that's a talent um yeah i uh i i have no, no idea each time how cool it's going to be until i get to the moment and then that whole sunday is just amazing and then you can also walk me through when you're walking down pit road getting ready to strap up put your helmet on but we have the thunderbirds the national anthem we've had presidents here at the racetrack for the daytona 500 for folks that have never been here, I immediately tell them this should be on your sports bucket list. It's up there with Super Bowls, and national championships, and mm -hmm. what other sporting events you want to add on to the list. As a driver, how does that feel? So cool. It's just so it's so wild. I would be here as a fan if I wasn't driving. Same. I, I yeah. would I would once I got old enough to tell my dad, no dad, I know we have plants in the ground, but on Sunday I'm gonna wake up early, drive over, watch the five hundred and come back and um, I, I would be doing that. Um, I, I just, I, yeah, it's hard to put into words any NASCAR race until you actually go. And obviously this one is our biggest. It, it's, um, uh, being in the final four two years ago at Phoenix was big for yeah, us. Yeah. But being there at Phoenix, not in the final four was much less big of a deal pre-race mm. this year in 20 or last year, 2023 versus the year before when we were in the final four. So this one. It's like everybody's in the final four. It's like every. It's this feels like what I can compare to going for a championship at the end of the year. Uh, what I've I've only felt it one time. I felt the 500 several times, and it's it's like that. It, that's what Phoenix Phoenix reminded me of the 500. Whenever I got there, and I was like, okay, it, it, like I'm absorbing all of this. It feels like the Daytona 500. Um, and so the just the unknowns. It's a new season. The possibilities are just. Everybody has their ideas of what they think is going to happen, but it's what's so great about live sports is we don't know. A lot of people forget that you won the last points-paying race in the NASCAR Cup Series. You won at Phoenix. Yeah. Did that carry over some energy and momentum into the off season for the track house men and women that are at that shop? Well, our tire carrier, Matt Simmons, on the one car, he self-proclaimed it as the longest win streak in NASCAR history, and he's just stayed with that. So, <laughs> I, you know, I, I can't tell the guy he's wrong. No, um, how dare you? Yes, that was huge. I mean, just hasn't been done in a decade of anybody winning the race that wasn't in the Final Four. And then, yeah, it just feels good to win. And that's, we're humans. We're, we're human. It's human nature. Like, as people, we just like to be rewarded for the hard work. Yeah. And for all the people at Trackhouse, um, that was, it was incredible. And that, that 
we took the fight to them, to the championship guys and girls, and we we competed with them, and we ultimately won. So um, it was, yeah, it was amazing and, and something I want to do a lot more of. All right. Good luck this week. Right. I know Trackhouse will be going after it. Yeah. Uh, maybe the win streak will continue. <laughs> hey, never know. I mean, we didn't win the clash. Uh, so I mean, I well, well, points pain. Yeah. There we go. All right, All everybody. Right. Ross Chastain. Thanks. Good to see you, Ross.